Hello everybody, welcome back to 10 Minute Reviews. I'm Jason. I'm Amy. That fuzzy one right there is Freya. She may put in an appearance, I'm Amy Girl. And uh, we're bringing you today's video. So please hit the like and subscribe buttons, guys. We, we love to talk about books. We want to bring you guys authors and books that are just fun and entertaining to read. So we're always going to be doing these videos. Please subscribe. We would really appreciate the, <laughs> we'd really appreciate the support. Um, this is just our family channel, just us having a good time. So um, that being said, I want to talk about today's books. So as always, I'm going to break it down into four pieces. The world, the, uh, the characters, plot and the writing style. So I want to talk about Primal Imperative by Quentin Kilgore. And this is a, yes I do, she said. <laughs> the fuzzy one says I'm not. She shook her head, but I am. We're going to talk about Primal Imperative by Quentin Kilgore. So this is a fantasy novel um, with, um, we'll just say multiple ro romantic relationships. Entanglement. And they, well. ta yo, they get entangled. They definitely get entangled with the sheets, with the pillows. Um, <laughs> and uh, it is a fantasy yeah, fantasy book. Um, I, I I don't want to call it a lit RPG book because there are no there aren't stats and levels and stuff like that. Uh, but there are definitely non-humans, and there is magic. So uh, yeah, I guess your swords and sorcery kind of fantasy world. Now the world itself. So it's a uh, alternate universe kind of thing. Once again, you've got the human that is transported upon death into um, another world and another body and. and the, this world is interesting because it's, it's a larger kingdom, but it's a kingdom of small towns. The small towns that just dot the, um, dot the, the world, basically, or the land. And, uh, but this, this world has suffered a, some form of curse back in its history, and it went from being a male-dominated society to being a female-dominated society because this curse weakened the men, and made them infertile. Uh, but it weakened them to the point where some of them couldn't even, couldn't even move. So hunting eventually got taken over by the women, uh, all the jobs eventually got taken over by the women, and the, uh, the kingdom itself and the rule of it eventually got taken over by the women. And so David pops up, and obviously the population has been declining, um, and they're also suffering a lot more attacks from the monsters because the, as the population declines, the women just aren't enough. There's just not enough of them to to manage to defend and to hunt and all that. And the kingdom is ruled by a queen that supposedly she has outlawed so many things. She got the the kingdom almost has a political party slash religion that is actually anti men. Um, it blames Amazon. them for the curse in some way, shape, or form. Doesn't believe men are needed. Believes that immaculate conception will occur to continue the population. Um, so has outlawed many, many things, almost anything man related. Men are no longer allowed to hunt. Men are no longer allowed to do all the, what few men remain. So David wakes up outside this small village, rescues a, a young lady and her daughter, and uh, uh, gets taken to the village that has, I believe, three surviving men, all old or weak, um, but still a couple of them are still pretty badass. And, uh, and is ruled, the local ruler is a cat girl, a rather well-endowed cat girl from, from the descriptions of the... Uh, of the the book um, and David is an actual virile strong powerful um, man so he almost feels obligated to try and help so he starts figuring out new ways of hunting and gets the men and the women involved in it this is not one of those those you know man great woman weak kind of things he is he himself is fairly strong but he requires the help of the other men and the other women to do things, to do just about everything. But there does seem to be some form of prophecy involved, in a way, uh, with him. And he has these, these. Um, I was going to say urges, but that'd be kind of obvious. He's well, he's in a town full of women that haven't seen a man that has any, uh, let's say, stiffness to him in decades or longer. Um, but he has these, these. It's almost like almost like a, um, a voice in his head at times that is pushing for, that is pushing basically three words, hunt, breed, kill, <laughs> or hunt, breed, rule, kind of. And then and near the end of it, he ends up having these visions, and he learns that he can bond to women <laughs> and gain magical powers. And apparently there was this great, great, great ruler. In fact, the original ruler of the land 
was a man that had bonded with multiple women and gained these these elemental magical powers, lightning, wind, stuff stuff along those lines. And that at first David is just it's almost like a slice of life at first. He's just trying to find food because they're starving, then trying to help defend against the the uh, the monsters that are trying to uh, cast ritual magics to break the the wards around the town. Um, but he actually naturally tries to do it a little bit different in that he goes out after the monsters and when he comes across them, he actually tries to make peace with them. Um, unlike most books where they attempt that, it doesn't work. Uh, he ends up captured, they end up being, uh, being betrayed, the town ends up getting, getting overrun by the monsters, but with the help of a few of the women he manages to, to break them free and uh, also with the help of, of a couple of the monsters, especially one female monster. Um, so again, multiple relationships, uh, but it's an interesting fantasy novel. I, I wouldn't put it at a 10 for 10, but I'd definitely say it's a solid 6 of 10. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. It was a gripping read. There's, uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, there's probably, probably two out of every five books that I start, I don't make it past the third chapter. I, I'm reading so many books that if it doesn't grip me by the third chapter, I'm done. And I'm pretty close to the same. This one I, I, I read all the way through. It's not, you know, it, it's not awesome, awesome, awesome literature, but it's good. It's fun. That's all. It's fun. It's entertaining. It's a good read. It's a good time. Um, David definitely yeah, had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's fun, guys. So check it out. After you hit the like and, and subscribe buttons, check out Primal Imperative by Quentin Kilgore. And, uh, yeah, have a good time. And otherwise, we will catch you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye now.